All right, so you heard me talk a lot about this phone, a lot of good things with this phone. And, you know, normally I would have things that I don't like about the phone, but it's really nitpicky. And in the context of the, the type of person I am, I don't nitpick over stuff that hasn't been on competitive devices in a couple of years. So I'm not going to talk about a headphone jack and stuff like that. Eh, we've been down that road. It's not coming back. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, SD card. They took it out. Whatever. I don't use it. I'm sorry. Whatever. This is just how it is. But I, what I want to get to is this phone is one of my favorites of all time. And how does it rank in my top for phones of all time this could change as the years go by but I think I should put it into the rankings and mind you I am not putting these four phones that I'm going to list off in any particular order because I don't think it's fair to do that because technically, the latest iteration of software should eclipse older versions. Right? That's how it works. If you make something that's lesser than something that was from 12 years ago, yeah, you should probably go back to the draw board. And I probably shouldn't have it in my top four. But, I mean, here we go. So, with that context, uh, or with that being said, I want to add context to it. And knowing, knowing that how I am, I have owned or used about 95% of the American phones that have been released over the years. And I would say 95% of that because I haven't used every sub model of a phone release. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've used every last version of a iPhone uh, 12 or 11 or 10. I used each one. Yes, I used each one, and I have an iPhone for work. Now, you're going to get pissed off at me, iPhone people, but after I, after I list my, my top four, I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Or should I just say it now? Should I just say it now? Okay. iPhones are not in my top four. Let me... Let me level set everybody real quick to understand where I'm coming from because you probably, you're probably gonna give me a bad rating on Apple Podcast just for the fact that you think I'm gonna trash iPhones. No, I'm not. And there's always been this war between Android and iOS, Samsung and Apple, Google and Apple, Google, Samsung, all that. I'm not into that. Not at least not anymore. But there was there's always something, and this is what this is what iPads too, and, the, and iPads have gotten better. It's, it's always something that causes me a point of frustration to where it stops me from being a power user. Now you got to remember, iPhones are meant for mass the mass consumer market. Uh, they're not a niche product. They're a mass market consumer product. And the way that you become the top uh, cell phone provider in a country, like iPhone is, is you make it something for everyone. But it's not for power users. It is a content consumption, but not necessarily a power user get deep into something and, you know, make magic cap. It's not, file management is not that great. Um, a lot of the sharing capabilities across different points of content aren't that great to me. 
it always is when I need to transfer files and and things as such which Android phones have always been relatively easy or if it's not easy I could find a workaround in a relatively quick fashion where uh, with, with iOS products I, I tend to hit a wall and I end up going to a computer <laughs> to do the rest of what I was trying to do and it's okay so it's great for a work phone if you just need for communication if you if you text social media call FaceTime blah blah, blah perfect for that iPhone is great in terms of the software and the hardware integration I can't be matched it can't be matched however it's not on the top four I mean I could put it as a five if I liked odd numbers I would I would put one of them as a five but as I said I don't like odd numbers so I'm gonna keep it at four it's my show you don't like it I hope you still listen so this is no particular order and you know, I already buried the lead with uh, the Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G being in the top four, so I'm not even going to say that again. But I just said it. But let's start. At the top. All right, and this is going to be fun for me. Really, really fun. Really, really fun. And I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back to whew, before before smartphones were called smartphones. Before Apple made the term smartphone popular. There was a couple of phones out there that I used before I really started to get into the iPhone. Because, in my opinion, the early iPhones were trash. They got really good over time. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. All right. So, the Palm Trio 650. Oh, man. I'm telling you. I remember back in the day, had this, and when was this? 2006? 2005, six, something around there. I had the Palm Trio 650. I remember this point in time because it was it was taking the functionality from a PDA and putting it with cellular technology for communication and using it like a phone. So you could do emails off this thing. It's kind of like early Blackberries or Blackberries in general. You do emails off this thing. What I really liked about this phone, which I AirDrop replicates this. Um, there's a file transfer like nearby on Android now does this. Uh, I remember a Bump app back in the day um, that you know used to use to transfer files uh, had this, but there was an IR blaster on the Palm Trio 650 and that <laughs> you were in an exclusive club if you ran into somebody else with a Palm Trio 650 and I remember getting close to the person uh, alright not intimate I'm, I'm not meaning intimate I mean getting close to the person in proximity to send a file and you point each IR blaster at each other and then the file just whoop, transfers just like that that was my first experience of mobile file transfers. Lost my damn mind. The keyboard on the Palm Trio 650 was not perfect, but it worked really, really well. To the point where it just hammered out text messages, emails, Emails more were more of like a you know sending letters to people, or communicating ex, you know longer messages than text messages would. I used to love that thing. Scheduling. I've always been a person that used the calendar a lot because I can't remember things. <laughs> I used to play music on it. I remember having oh man. What was that? I remember having a Jay Z album. On my Palm Trio 650. And it was only a few songs. So it had like this proprietary. You know like Sony. Made their. The storage cards proprietary. Well Palm kind of did the same thing. And 
and I had music on there and I used to listen to it. I used to actually work a tip job at, uh, what was it, Cumming? Bear? Cumming? It was a plant somewhere. And I used to listen to it while uh, working. I used to plug it up in the car, you know? I want, let me look up this, uh, let me look up this album real quick. Because I want to, I think it was, I want to say it was the, the, his comeback album, but I'm not sure. Holy crap, I was right, Kingdom Come, 2006, that line brought right up. So I had a few songs on um, that SD card, on the Palm Trio. Listening to some uh, my favorite, uh, I think I had the whole album on there and some more. Listening to some Jay Z, man. Palms Trio 650. Next one, and I, I think this is more chronological than you know my favorite in terms of order, but this is more chronological. I had many different phones in between the Palm Trio 650 and the BlackBerry Bold 9000. Blackberry Bold, whew, Blackberry Bold 9000 was like the Cadillac of Blackberries. Everything on this phone was made perfectly. This is still uh, the point where you didn't have. Now, let me back up a little bit because, as I recall, and I do recall this vividly. The Palm Trio 650 had touchscreen. The BlackBerry Bold didn't. However, however, I didn't miss it. And they would later on later models of the the Bold, they would they would have different models that come out later, but they, they would eventually get touchscreen. Hmm. Didn't last too long um, with that. But the Palm Trio 650, I remember that vividly, cause uh, it was kind of like a beach goer at the time. Always hanging out with people, chilling, cutting hooky from work. Sorry, sorry, past manager. <laughs> but Palm Tree 650 went with me everywhere. Had a a faux leather back on it, so it it was still that that age to where you didn't really use a phone case because phone cases weren't. I mean, you put it on Nokia phones, but you didn't really put it on like smartphones like that. But it had a, a a really good feel in the handles, balance. It was it was wide, and I don't know if you remember the Blackberries before then, but the Blackberries uh, before then were okay. The, the big blue one was super wide, and then the more consumer ones were like the 850. Yeah, I remember all these. The 850 um, and the 950, they were kind of narrow. They were good to use. The keyboards are great. The scroll wheel was, you know how the scroll wheel get it get kind of oily and it stopped working. You got to get alcohol to replace it. <laughs> but it was the it was that stage where either people had iPhones or Blackberries. This is either one of the two, iPhones or Blackberries. And I loved this phone because the keyboard was the best keyboard on any any smartphone tactile keyboard on any smartphone ever made hands down don't care I, and 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 i've had the t-mobile sidekick or as they call the danger hip top um back in the day and even with that keyboard the mm, that blackberry bold 9000 keyboard was superb it was like the Cadillac of smartphones then it was tough battery life was long this I mean the thing was fast you can hammer out like an email really quick and that's when Facebook really got on Blackberry um, and people started to tweet and all that I mean whoa man just think of Remember Obama had a Blackberry? I remember I got my boy Harry into Blackberries and I had everybody, I had half of the North Charleston area on Blackberries. Yes, I did. Because I kept talking about it. 
and I did tech support. It was not without its issues, <laughs> but my God, that was an awesome phone. The other phone where I hold so deep in, uh, to my heart is going to be the OG Motorola Droid. Oh yeah, that thing was built like a tank. And if any other phone had the ability to make you feel nostalgic in a way that if you ever had the original Motorola droid my god the things the things the conversations uh, the just the, the crazy stuff that you can do with the phone that no, you couldn't really do before um, Android was starting to really get out there man Google Maps was had t voice turn by turn on the phone holy crap and it was good you couldn't man you couldn't break the thing it was made out of metal really good metal I mean if you drop it sometimes the battery battery cage will come off but you know put it back on but man that phone was so good it was it was quick it was fast it was better than the other early Android devices it was something that caused the phone was so popular that people still call Android droids it had a marketing campaign that went all the way up to uh, Lucas films and they had a R2D2 version of the Motorola droid I had I had two versions of the Motorola Droid. The second one was not so good as the original. They tried to expand upon the capabilities of it. It hit in some places, but nah. Lightning didn't strike twice. But man, that OG, and I say the OG Motorola Droid because that one changed everything. That phone was Verizon's competitor to the Apple iPhone because the iPhone was exclusive still to AT&T and the only way you can get the iPhone is if you were AT&T or you buy it it would I mean try to get in a lock back then good job but Verizon used the Motorola Droid as a direct competitor in terms of marketing and everything market share whatever to the exclusivity of the iPhone on AT&T and that's what I think that's what really started the Android versus iOS war and still goes on today where people prefer one over the other eh, I mean now I mean if you if you're just a casual user not a hardcore user you can use anyone as long as you're not locked into either ecosystem but man that OG droid what the only the only downside of that and, and it was just the limitation of the technology back then it was the camera and you no know, everybody everybody had a lackluster camera back then so it was on par with everyone else but in terms of the camera it was it was actually decent for its time so was the blackberry bolds but you know blackberry wasn't really known for any of their camera features <sighs> And I think back, oh man, oh my goodness, the, uh, the Palm Trio 650 had a camera too. It, that wasn't great. It was a VGA camera, as I remember. It was not great. It was not great. Oh, it was not great. But of course, now, right now, I look and, and hold this, what seems to be a masterpiece of, of technology. And it feels like Samsung put their their foot in this I think this is my my new favorite phone and it deserves a place on the list now again I said this can change over time and I'm gonna give an honorable mention to the iPhone 12 Pro Max because it's just a great phone man I'm not a hater but it's not in my top five because I don't like odd numbers so I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks and maybe like a uh, an idea of what case to buy with this thing because uh, you know cases cases are a thing. 